you can see he tried the pit maneuver, but you have to get the side of the vehicle, not the rear of the vehicle. That oh, looks this like is getting really dicey here. There are a lot of cars around here too, Joe. Probably right. some pedestrians in the area. It's the height here. It's the height of rush hour, and this is so unusual for uh, the New York City or New Jersey area. This is more reminiscent of an L.A. pursuit um, because this just does not happen. Folks do not run this much in New Jersey. A lot of times they'll run, but uh, police officers will uh, call off the chase. But after he struck a police officer on Route 7, I guess all bets are off because obviously this guy is wanted for something more than a simple assault with a baseball bat. He is still racing around local streets here in Jersey City. He is primarily staying off the main drags of Kennedy Boulevard, etc. Um, I'm just doing a wide shot here to see if police officers are still behind him. There are two or three vehicles behind him. We are just coming up. Uh, he just made the left turn. I was unable to catch the street sign there. It may be uh, truck route one and nine. All right, Joe, thank you. Uh, for those of you just joining us, we want to say good afternoon. I'm Cindy Shu. And I'm already at Assis. Look at this, Cindy. This is a wild it's, police uh, chase. Southbound on 440 at Communipaw Avenue is where the, the chase is. So they're coming down 440 into Communipaw Avenue. We understand the police officers are watching this. Here he is swerved. Now he's driving the wrong way down 440. There's the state police the helicopter. There. How that, fast is he going, Joe? What, what is the estimated My speeds speed are guesstimating him to be easily at 40, 50 miles an hour, right through the intersection. Now, 440 is a heavily traveled road. Lots of cars, lots of trucks. It's difficult at best to navigate it during normal rush hours. But Je Joe, do you think that he's going to run into traffic and that may slow him down because he's been going up and down kind of empty residential areas? Right. Well, my understanding is uh, from, from the uh, license plate that the, this guy lives in Bayonne and from all signs is he's trying to get back home to Bayonne. There's the state police helicopter. They are down at about 100 feet just paralleling this guy. That is why he will not get out, get uh, away with this. Now he's on the wrong this side of 440. Isn't it? Wow, this is absolutely really, amazing. It's, it's, you know, I don't know when you saw that movie, Speed. It's like watching that, where this thing is just going, and it's just not going to stop. Uh, you know, with your experience, Joe, in the police department and so forth, uh, what, what other action can they take at this point? I mean, they've been chasing him for a long time, and they're from behind. What about from, from the front? I mean, are well, there any other? Yeah, go ahead. What they'll try and do is get stop sticks out, which will deflate the tires. But he is driving so erratically that they cannot get a vehicle in front of him to put those stop sticks out. So it, all they can do is try and stay behind them. Now, the real key is with the, with the helicopter there. That's a state police helicopter. They will stay in close contact with them um, that uh, this guy just will not get away. Some of the uh, benefits he has is that's a Jeep, 4x4. Four four. He can get up over those medians where some of the Crown Vicks, the police cars, they have problems bouncing up and over. But, Joe, is he still in Jersey City? Uh, let's see. Yes, we still are. Uh, I believe this is 440 coming south. We're coming down towards the uh, Newark Bay extension of the New Jersey Turnpike. Um, it, that's why I think he is headed trying to get back to Bayonne. Uh, who knows for what reason he wants to get back to his own uh, turf. But police have run his registration. So if it is not a stolen car, uh, they know who he is. And in all efforts, it does look like he is trying to get back to Bayonne. Now we're uh, taking a ramp. I have to widen out to see which Where ramp. Where is he heading out to right now? Where are we here? Uh, we're on 440 right down by the New Jersey Turnpike, the Newark Bay extension. Here they may try and spin him out, do that pit maneuver, because it's not a highly trafficked area. It is on the ramp. But at this looks like the police can't get next to him. Uh, the pur pursuit intervention tactic is that pit maneuver that they try and uh, bump into his uh, fender and uh, cut him off. Um, sounds like we're near 63rd and the boulevard. Oh, we're getting into a congested area too here, Joe. Watch this. Whoop. Whoa. Yep, uh, local towns. Uh, he may be coming down here into Bayonne. Yep. He has just so, come into Bayonne. We understand he's going south on the boulevard in Bayonne, just south of the Newark Bay extension. Uh, these are officers. I can't read what town they are from, but there have probably been at least 30 different towns pursuing yeah. this guy. Did we lose one of the police cars here, Joe? I just see one now. There, there were two. Uh, oh, there there's they are. There, there's the second one. Yeah. And there's about four more behind him. Um, 
We're losing them behind the buildings here. You were, oh, you were, oh, there he is. Yeah. You were talking about how this, well, we may have something here. Hold oh, on. There right. you go. There they tried the They're pit, about to, uh, that pit maneuver on, on a turn where they try and spin the vehicle right out. But again, that was the second or third pit maneuver that has not worked. And he's on local streets in Bayonne at this juncture the bayonne police department have wow. also joined the chase you can this see this is so close look at this like yep. you said you know you see this on the freeway you know we see a tape of that or live coverage of a, All right, of he's, a he's, chase he's going to be California, blocked but in there here. we are he's going to be blocked in okay. there the police car rams him he bounces off another car this guy's not going to give up nope just goes to show how indestructible these four by fours and jeeps are they the jeep is going to be heavier than this police car that's one of the problems is to try and spin him out they need a heavy vehicle you can can see part of his bumper is off the Jeep. Got to wonder what's going They're through on this, 50, this guy's mind. 49th Street near Avenue C is what the police are saying. Now they make that turn. That's where the police will try and pit them. But hang on a second. Yeah, I'm watching this, Joe, and I'm worried about people on the street and the children out there playing or whatever. Yep. This is this is a he's, very dangerous situation that we're witnessing here. Right. He's eastbound on 45th Street, going the wrong way. This is a one-way street. If you look, all the cars are parked facing the other way. This is in the area of 45th Street and Avenue C, according to the police, who are calling out his locations. Now this he's been going on for about uh, 20 minutes or so, and uh, this is a, uh, a police chase going on, as you see on your screen there. Bayonne is what we have... Uh, put on the screen for you. This all started in Reddington, New Jersey, and the driver uh, right now in the lead there apparently assaulted another driver with a baseball bat, went on, and then struck a police officer, and there have been a number of accidents here and there, but this chase has been going on. Two police cars behind him right now, and look at this. Watch this here. Watch this carefully, Joe. This is uh, Avenue E in Bayonne. Uh, about 42nd Street was the last location that uh, police had called out. One encouraging note, though, Joe, we mentioned the uh, police officer in Kearney that he did hit, but he was okay. Yes, and we did see him strike the police officer. It was one of those things that we were looking at, and you almost can't believe what you saw, but we stayed with the shot. The police officer brushed himself off, kind of shook his head, realized he wasn't seriously injured. Then he jumped in his own 4 by 4 Carney police vehicle and went in pursuit. We lost track of that officer. So at this point, even though this is incredibly reckless and he's hit so many different things, there haven't been any serious injuries we know about. There we go. While there were some serious injuries on Route 280, uh -oh. this looks like it's going to end here. They have him on 46th Street. Okay, let's, police let's officers follow this. at gunpoint. Where are we right now, Joe? Uh, what location the closest are we intersection at? I can give you is 42nd Street and Avenue E in Bayonne was the last known location. Police officers are surrounding this house. He, the perpetrator must be out on foot behind the building. Uh, I hear now officers saying he is in custody, must be behind the building. They're calling off the pursuit, saying he is in custody. Captain Eddie Baker swinging us around to behind this home near 46th Street and Avenue E in Bayonne. How many miles did we cover on this chase, Joe? Can oh, must have, must have been at least 50 miles. About 50 miles. Uh, we'll take you down into the actual arrest behind this home. What, what can we see there? Can we come in a little closer? While the guy is on, on the ground, it looks like he's in a red jacket there. Police, off, police officers are trying to uh, and nobody else in the vehicle we see, right? Handcuff him. He was alone. Uh, it appears that he was alone. At this point, police officers are trying to give their dispatcher the exact location, but it is in Bayonne, uh, off Avenue E, in the 40s, maybe 42nd Street. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to reposition the helicopter here. What you're seeing there, that's a little bit of heat coming off our engine. Right. Now, there are a dozen or so officers down on the scene. They have the perpetrator. Uh, in handcuffs. The guy in the red jacket must have been a police officer, uh, plainclothes cop. We haven't been able to pick up the, the, the suspect yet. We don't know whether he was armed or, or anything. Well, last word was he was armed with a baseball bat. That's mm -hmm. what all started this pursuit uh, in Hunterdon County, some sort of attack. There he is. He's in handcuffs. Uh, looks like a white male uh, in his 20s or 30s. 
You're looking at uh, police officers from all the surrounding towns. They have in, him in custody. They're going to lead him back to one of these police vehicles and put him inside a police car to safely secure him. Now, the, the key is they want to get him away from all the police officers whose adrenaline are very high at this point sure. from this pursuit. There it is, one suspect in custody placed in the back of an automobile. As soon as they close that uh, rear door on the car, all the police officers will breathe a sigh of relief from this high-speed pursuit. You should stay with us and look at some of the yeah. footage we shot once we get a chance to edit We're it. We're going to do that. As far as we know, Joe, the, the um, uh, fellow that was assaulted originally um, in, in Reddington <coughs> and also the police officer, they're, they're okay? Uh, I did not get a uh, report on the uh, civilian that was injured uh, w with, the, with the baseball bat. My understanding was now we're going to roll some slow motion tape of the officer that was struck in Kearney. Uh, it's what the producer is saying. That there he is. Watch closely. Right there is where the Kearney officer was struck. You see him bounce off yeah. Route 7. Holding he kind of shakes there. himself. He was struck by the guy in the Jeep. You can see him shaking his hand. All of a sudden, he gets his senses and back. And right back on the job. Look at him. Jumps in, the, jumps in and says, I'm going to go get mm -hmm. that guy and uh, takes off Route 7 after the guy. Uh, on the left is the tape. On the right is live. They eventually got the suspect in Bayonne off Avenue E in the 40s. I'm not sure if it's 42nd Street. Uh, this is uh, That's that officer in his 4x4 from Kearney that actually was struck on Route 7, got his senses back, and then pursued uh, the perpetrator. And Joe, uh, when, you, when you think of the magnitude of what happened here over 50 miles, I mean, as the expression goes, it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse here. I was amazed during when we first picked up the chase that it actually was going in the wrong direction on Route 280. This guy was doing 50 miles an hour. Here it is, slow motion. This is tape from when we first picked it up. He is going west in the eastbound lanes of 280. Wow. You can imagine all the traffic 50, 60 miles an hour on Route 280 coming down into Newark. You can see That's it's incredible. just amazing how no vehicles were struck. Well, think of the people in those cars, too. You know, think of the uh, families. I mean, just imagine what they were thinking as they see this uh, 4x4 coming right, right at them. Yep, just coming right at them on Route 280. This guy actually continued up 280, went under an underpass. Wow. We lost him. He made a U-turn, then actually came back down 280. Oh, on, that's close. On to Route 7. Yep, and we couldn't believe it as we were shooting this footage. It's one of those things that you see on TV and movies, but uh, not in real life, in particularly out here in New Jersey, where a lot of times they end up calling off the chase. But uh, gone on 280, he had caused several automobile accidents. Uh, and Joe, is, uh, Joe, you were talking about the automobile accidents and we're talking about injuries. You were saying that you're not sure about the injuries on those folks either? Right. There were some injuries. We heard state police request uh, ambulances to the scene. That's when he was driving westbound in the eastbound lanes of 280, just west of the Stickle Drawbridge. He caused several accidents there, uh, all of which there was so much commotion going on on all the police radios that we did pick up that they did request police assistance. This is where in Kearney, he's coming down Route 7. The officer must have spotted him. Uh, yep, right there, the officer there tried is. to stop him. Yep. The, he got pinned between the bad guy's car and the uh, vehicle that was stopped there on Route 7. Uh, the officer was uh, brushed up against. He probably has uh, injuries to the shoulder. Now we're back live. You can see yeah. all the dozens of officers still here at the scene. Now what they're going to have to do is do a major investigation, retrack his route, find out how many accidents he actually caused, how many vehicles were actually struck by this guy. He will have a whole host of charges as well as felony fleeing, the assault charges from uh, the baseball bat uh, incident. Uh, state police were in pursuit. This pursuit actually started out in uh, Bernard's Township somewhere. We uh, understand those officers were involved as they came up Route 287. New Jersey State Police joined them. At one point, uh, we were hearing on the uh, police channels when uh, officers were trying to request, where is he, where is he? They were saying to him, turn on channel two. We're watching Chopper mm -hmm. 2 fly above the guy. Sure. So they sure. were getting information from us as well as uh, where his condition was. Joe, do, do we know what originally started? I mean, what was the reason behind this altercation in the first place in, in Reddington, New Jersey, right? All we know is, Ernie, we got dispatched for a high-speed pursuit coming east on Route 78. I was told the guy may have attacked somebody with a baseball bat. 
then we picked up the big chase. Uh, so we didn't have any details as far as what started it. We got into it after the actual initial altercation. 